Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, The Advent Calendar. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a woman named Eva swimming in a public pool. A good-looking young man approaches her in the pool and tries to make small talk. He compliments her beauty, but she rebuffs his attempts at hormone flirting. Instead, she asks the man to get the nearby wheelchair sitting at the edge of the pool. He obeys and wheels the contraption to Eva. To his surprise, she hauls herself from the pool and struggles to sit on the chair. There is also a long scar running down Eva's spine. The man is shocked to see that the girl he found pretty is actually a paraplegic. With a knowing smirk, Eva wheels herself away. The movie flashes forward to an ominous scene in the future. Eva is recording a video of herself, warning others that if they also received an advent calendar, then they have to follow the rules or else they will die. A bus equipped for people with disabilities takes Eva home to her apartment. Her dog is waiting for her, and she pours him a bowl of food. That night, as she lies in bed, she dreams of the car accident that left her paralyzed. Eva works as an insurance agent, but her greasy and greedy boss is complaining that her sales for the past few months are not looking great. He reminds her that he had to shell out money to make the office handicap-friendly, and she better be worth the cash. Afterward, Eva calls her senile old father's second wife and asks to talk to him. It's Eva's birthday, and she wants to have a comforting conversation with her father. But the wife just tells her that her father has already forgotten her due to his dementia. That night, Eva's friend Sophie visits her to celebrate her birthday and cheer her up. She presents Eva with an advent calendar from Germany. It's a small carved wooden cabinet that contains 24 small boxes, each marked with a number. The tradition denotes that the one who receives the advent calendar must open one box each day, starting from December 1st to 24th, the day before Christmas. Each box will contain a lovely surprise, and it's a delightful way to count down to Christmas. On the back of the calendar is a warning that says if the receiver throws away the gift, someone will kill them. However, Eva takes this message as a joke. She eagerly places the calendar on her desk and takes the key located inside. She uses it to unlock the door marked 1. Inside is a piece of chocolate. She unwraps it and sees a series of German phrases written on the wrapper. Sophie translates that they are rules. The first rule is that Eva has to eat all the chocolate she may find inside the calendar as the days go on. Second, she has to respect all the rules until she reaches the last door. The third rule reiterates that if she throws away the calendar, she will be killed. In response, she eats the chocolate. Eva opens another box and is surprised to see that inside is a piece of chocolate that is the same brand as her father's favorite. She opens another door, and inside is a small drawing with a German phrase urging the reader to destroy what hurts them. Hours later, a recorded voice comes from the advent calendar, announcing that it's now midnight and Eva can now open another door. She unlocks it, and a wooden figure of a man emerges from the center of the calendar. The door opens, and inside is a message, uttering the parable of Jesus Christ commanding a cripple to walk again. This hits too close to home for Eva, and she tells Sophie that she's tired. The friend tactfully leaves her alone. Later on, her broken telephone rings and Eva picks it up. At the other end of the line is her father, but he doesn't speak again and the line goes dead. The next morning, her boss informs her that he's getting a newbie agent. To train her, she will handle some of Eva's clients. The boss explicitly threatens that if Eva doesn't improve her performance, he will give all her clients to the newbie instead. That night, Eva tells Sophie about the strange call from her father. She gets the idea that somehow, the advent calendar is granting her wishes. Afterward, she and Eva go on a double date with an arrogant trader and a nice hunter. Trader is a playboy who's good at trading hormones, but poor at trading stocks. He's unbelievably rude to Eva during the whole dinner, and Hunter apologizes to Eva for his friend's behavior. But surprisingly, it is Sophie that Hunter invited for drinks afterward, not Eva. With her friend occupied, Trader takes Eva home. She falls asleep on the way, and wakes up to Trader molesting her. She protests, but she can't run away because of her disability. Eventually, Trader gets irritated with her attempts at preventing him from touching her hormones, so he leads her in the middle of a dark road with her wheelchair. As he speeds away, Eva curses him to drop dead out of anger. In her apartment, the advent calendar's fifth box opens, and a small toy car rolls out. Eva's dog sees it and starts playing with it. As the messy dog rocks the toy car every which way, the car being driven by Trader gets rocked too, ending his hormone trading life. The next morning, Sophie informs Eva that Trader died. Eva is aghast because earlier that day, she received a text from Trader asking for her forgiveness. He also sent her a link to a trading app with several hundred euros deposited in an account for her. That night, Eva is awakened by the advent calendar's reminder that it is midnight. She opens a new box and receives a red heart-shaped candy. 
The next day, while in an outdoor cafe, Eva sees the man she was crushing on at the park the other day. The waitress places his drink on Eva's table, and she gets the idea to put the red candy in the man's drink. The man gets the drink, and after sipping it, he suddenly walks up to Eva. He introduces himself as William, and unabashedly flirts the hormones out of her. The two talk for hours, and Eva reveals that she was a dancer before she got into the life-changing accident. William drives her home, and they promise to see each other again. Afterward, Eva opens another box, and she gets a clock candy this time. After she eats it, four days inexplicably pass, and she has no idea what happened. Because of this, she gets fired from her job. She calls William in tears, and he takes her home. Eva now believes that the advent calendar has something to do with the strange occurrences. She resolves not to open a box that night. But when midnight arrives, another door opens, and her messy dog eats the bone-shaped candy inside. The next morning, she finds a necklace charm stuck in her dog's throat. She recognizes it as the necklace that her boss wears. So Eva calls her boss immediately, but he doesn't answer, implying that something has happened to him because of the advent calendar. She also finds the remains of the car candy in her dog's throat, and she recalls that Trader died inside a car that looks like the car candy. She begins to piece together that every candy coming from the advent calendar had real-life repercussions. She remembers the crippled drawing she got from one of the boxes, and wonders if the accompanying candy will be able to make her walk again. So she eats the candy. Immediately afterward, her legs start twitching uncontrollably. She loses consciousness and wakes up in the hospital with William by her side. He tells her that she was found lying on the street, clutching the advent calendar. Later on, Eva remembers that she was able to walk after she ingested the candy. She gets confined to the hospital for further examination. One night, a psych patient approaches her with the advent calendar. She opens a box carved with a skull and gives the coin-shaped candy to the patient. It is implied that she dies after eating it. Eva returns home and sees the same favorite chocolate of her father inside the advent calendar. She takes the chocolate to her father's house and feeds it to him. Suddenly, her senile father is fully conscious and mentally able. He tells her that he misses her. He also warns her that the advent calendar will continue to take lives, and if she wants to live, she will have to sacrifice other people. Eva takes a remaining piece of the cripple candy and shows William that it can make her walk again. Like last time, her legs twitch and she collapses to the floor. William places a hand on her thigh to steady her, and Eva excitedly shouts that she can feel his hand on her leg. One day, William finds himself wandering inside Eva's house while she's swimming in the pool. He sees Eva's collection of candy wrappers and the advent calendar. The scary wooden figure of the man pops up again from the center of the advent calendar. Words also begin to appear backward. William gets terrified, so he decides to get rid of the advent calendar once and for all. However, he does not know the rules state that if he throws it away, the male figure will kill him. He throws the advent calendar into the river. Right then, the super ugly male figure appears before the terrified William and drags him into the river and drowns him. At that same moment, Eva is swimming in the pool, and she gets transported to the river. She sees William unconscious at the bottom, and she desperately tries to revive him, but there is nothing she can do. Mysteriously, she regains consciousness back in her apartment. The advent calendar is back with her. The good-looking man from the pool comes by her apartment to check on her, because she had left her wheelchair and clothes back at the pool. Eva tells him to go away. Midnight comes, and Eva opens another box. She swallows the candy inside, and it makes her hallucinate that a monster is choking her. She fights back with a knife. Sophie arrives and discovers Eva holding a bloody knife after killing her own dog. Eva takes another candy later. It takes her back in time to the fateful car accident. It turns out, Sophie was with her in the car back then, and was taking a selfie, so she didn't see that another vehicle was about to hit them. Sophie always felt guilty about causing her best friend's paralysis. Sophie decides to stay with Eva because she is unstable. She's now busy dating Hunter, who turns out to hunt only hormones, but not animals. So Hunter suggests that they take Eva with them on their weekend getaway in his hormone cabin. Eva is still obsessed with the advent calendar, and she notices that the carved male figure is missing from its slot. She opens another box and gets the candy. But she realizes that if she eats the candy, the male figure will kill Suffy because she had hurt Eva when she caused the paralysis. Knowing that, she gives the candy to Sophie for safekeeping, so Sophie won't be hurt. She also discovers a painting hidden in a secret compartment in the advent calendar. The painting depicts a man killing his wife and son. In the corner of the room was the advent calendar. But later that night, the male figure, now an emaciated man with a terrifying mask on his face, walks into the cabin and kills Hunter and Sophie. He also forces Eva to swallow the candy. 
It turns out, Sophie's death is the price she has to pay in order for herself to walk again, and Hunter's death is just a side sacrifice. Afterward, she traces the painting to the man who painted it. The man does not remember making the painting, and he has been blind for five years. It's revealed that his wife and son are well too, but when he touches the painting, he gets a brief flashback, confirming that he did kill his wife and son one year ago. Eva realizes that the last door in the advent calendar holds a candy that will reset all the incidents by turning back time and taking her back to December 1st, when her life was still normal. The blind painter must have also been tempted by the calendar, and he sacrificed his wife and son to get his vision back. But when he reached the last door and ate the candy inside, time turned back and his life returned to as it was before he encountered the advent calendar. It also made him forget about the things he had done, so he made the painting and stored it in the advent calendar as a warning of the danger and temptation to the person who will next get the evil calendar. So Eva now knows that when she reaches the last door on December 24th, all the people she had sacrificed will return back to life. But this also means that she will go back to being a paraplegic. She decides to make the most out of her remaining time. She sends the advent calendar to her cruel stepmother, who throws it in the fire, earning the wrath of the male figure and her death in the process. Next, she goes to her father and feeds him another chocolate that will cure his Alzheimer's. He knows what she's doing, and he accepts it. She also kills him as a sacrifice. Finally, she rents an expensive hotel room for her last night. She also invites the good-looking man from the swimming pool so they can play a satisfying hormone game together. Afterward, she tells him all about the advent calendar and the rules she was forced to obey. Before the clock strikes midnight, Eva goes up to the rooftop of the hotel with the advent calendar. She films a video of herself warning the next person who will get the advent calendar. She then dances a beautiful ballet piece one last time before the reset. She opens the last door and holds the candy in her hand, ready to eat it. Suddenly, the man rushes to the rooftop. He tells her that the second rule states that she has to follow all the rules until she opens the last door. Since Eva has now opened the last door, she doesn't have to obey the rules anymore. More importantly, she can choose not to eat the candy and be permanently able to walk. However, if she doesn't eat the candy, then time won't reverse, and all the people she sacrificed will stay dead. Due to the huge temptation, Eva's mind races, and the faces of her father, William, Sophie, and all the other victims flash in her head. The movie ends with Eva screaming and her decision remaining unknown. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.